Hello, welcome to Chagpar MD. I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar. I'm so glad that you found this video. We are living in extraordinary times with the COVID pandemic. All of us or many of us are working from home facing incredible stress. Maybe we lost a job, maybe we're looking at a health crisis, maybe we've even lost somebody in our family or one of our friends. Certainly, many of our schedules have been turned upside down. Uh, many of us are facing the stress of teaching our children at home and working from home at the same time. We are emotionally eating very close to the fridge. The gyms are closed and many of us are having difficulty fighting a different kind of curve aside from just the viral epidemic. Yep, we're all facing the crisis of gaining weight during this pandemic. And so many people have asked me, how do I stay healthy during this pandemic? How do I not gain weight? Well, in this video, I hope to answer all of those questions and give you some really good tips on how you can improve your diet, your exercise, help with a bit of the stress relief, and keep your, your lifestyle and your healthy habits on track. So what do you say? Let's get started. So we are living in unprecedented times with the COVID pandemic. And for many of us, this is a time of extraordinary stress. We are facing a health crisis, an economic crisis, and so often it is so hard to maintain healthy habits, let alone lose weight during this pandemic. Many people have asked me, how is it that we can avoid gaining weight during the current crisis? With all of the stress and emotional eating, the gyms being closed and no place really to deal with our stress. Well, I have some incredible tips and tricks for you on how to stay healthy during this time. Now, many of us know what a pandemic is. We're living through one. It's defined as an epidemic occurring over a wide geographic area and affecting an exceptionally high proportion of the population. But there's a newsflash. There's another pandemic, one that has existed for decades. It accounts for 8% of deaths worldwide, and the number of deaths uh, has almost doubled from 4.5% in 1990. Um, and so what is this other pandemic, and what are we doing about it? Well, you guessed it. It's obesity. If we look at this map from 1975, you can see that most of the countries in the world are in the yellow to lime green in terms of the proportion of adults who are obese. If we fast forward to 2016, you can see that the, the map has really changed. Now more than 40% of all adults in America are considered obese. And this is a real problem. Why? Because if we think about the leading causes of death in America, they're really two, heart disease and cancer. And these account for over 45% of all deaths. And obesity is a leading cause for both of them. The other thing, heart disease and cancer are actually the leading causes of death worldwide. Now, many of you know that I'm a breast cancer surgeon and the daughter of a breast cancer survivor. So cancer is particularly close to my heart. And when we think about the effect of being overweight on cancer, it increases your risk of a number of types of cancer, not just breast cancer. Excess weight is responsible for 8% of all cancers and 7% of all cancer deaths. Now, if you're one of the over 16 million people in this country who are cancer survivors, being overweight increases your risk of recurrence for many of those cancers. And if you're one of the people who has never experienced cancer, well, being overweight increases your risk of developing cancer. So what do we do about that? Well, we all know what goes into being overweight or obese. It's really a combination of diet, inactivity, and stress. Now, sure, your genetics play into this as well, 
But these are some factors that should be largely within our control. Now I know what you're thinking. In the current pandemic, it seems like nothing is in our control, let alone these factors. Stress, we have plenty of stress. And we know that with stress, our bodies release a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol leads to obesity. Not only that, but many of us are emotionally eating. And all of the places that we go to relieve stress, like churches and places of worship, are closed. We're socially isolating, so we may not have the kind of social support that we would normally have with friends and family. The gym, which is a great place to work off some stress, not only some calories, many of these are closed. We're working from home. And so we're not walking around as much and we're in closer proximity to the fridge. All of this is just the right ingredients to blend in together to form another kind of curve and one that we really want to flatten. So while this can seem overwhelming, I have some really easy practical tips to help you to stay healthy during these times. Let's start with diet and nutrition. I think that many of the things that can help us actually start by making healthy decisions at the grocery store. So if you choose not to buy the peanut M&Ms or the bag of potato chips or the chocolate candy, whatever is your trigger food at the grocery store and bring it into the house, it's less likely that you're going to eat it. The other tip. Keep fruits and veggies visible and accessible. If the first thing you see when you open the fridge is a big platter of some really fresh fruits and vegetables, it's more likely that you're going to eat those than if you had at the first sight when you open the fridge a big piece of chocolate cake, then that might be more tempting. The next tip is think about portion control. There is no doubt that portion sizes have increased over the last several decades in the United States. So we're eating more without even knowing it. So some easy tips and tricks. Instead of using a big dinner plate, think about a smaller plate. That way you can fool your brain into thinking you're eating more than you actually are. Now, in addition to thinking about how much you eat, it's also important to think about what you eat and the sizes of the proportions of each of your macronutrients. I really like this healthy eating plate from the Harvard School of Public Health. You can see that half of the plate is fruits and vegetables. Then you've got some healthy proteins, some whole grains, and for a beverage, think water. It's a great source of fluid and it helps your metabolism as well. Not only that, it can help you to feel fuller faster. Pre-plan your meals. So instead of simply going to the fridge every time you think you're hungry and grabbing the first thing that strikes your fancy, make a schedule and stick to it. Make a plan. What are you going to have for breakfast? What are you going to have for lunch? What are you going to have for dinner? That way it helps you to plan out how many calories you're going to eat within that day. Keep a log. So often we're mindlessly eating. It's really important to pay attention to what we're actually putting into our mouths. So apps like MyFitnessPal can help or keeping a food diary. Now some people say that that promotes an unhealthy relationship with food and that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting that knowing what you're consuming is often helpful than mindlessly eating. The other thing I find really helpful is, before you eat something, ask yourself, am I really hungry? Or am I, fill in the blank here, procrastinating, stressed, trying to get my mind off of whatever it is that's currently bothering me? And then deal with those things first. Now, what about exercise? I know, I know, all the gyms are closed. It used to be that the number one excuse I got when asking people why they didn't exercise was, I didn't have time. And so I always used to love this cartoon that says, 
what fits your busy schedule better, exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? Now the excuse that I get is all the gyms are closed. But you know what? There's great ways to incorporate exercise in your routine even when you're safe distancing at home. So a number of gyms and other programs have offered online programs. Check out Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. Um, many clubs are offering classes online and newsflash, they are free. So this is a great way to incorporate some exercise into your routine. Keep a star chart. There's been a study that looked at corporate executives and it basically kept a calendar. They would give them stickers if they worked out for 30 minutes each day. It is amazing how even corporate level executives would try to fit in that exercise no matter what just to get that sticker. And that kind of study has been replicated more than once. So grab a calendar or a Google Sheet and give yourself a star every time you meet your exercise goals. You'd be surprised how that can keep you accountable. And speaking of accountability, have an accountability buddy, even if it's a virtual accountability buddy. Have somebody who can check in on you, see how you're doing. How have you been this week? Are you keeping on track? Maybe somebody to share an online yoga class with or go for a walk with or check in and see if you made it to that Zumba class. Most importantly, you want to make an appointment with yourself and keep it. And your accountability buddy is there to help cheer you on. Now, your accountability buddy doesn't need to be somebody that you know. You can have a virtual accountability buddy too. In fact, if you subscribe, I'll be your virtual accountability buddy. Every week, I'll be in your inbox if you just push the notification button too, giving you a new video with tips and tricks on how to stay healthy and how to lose weight if that's what you want to do. So, um, let's do this together. Now, the next tip, manage stress. There is no doubt we are living in stressful times and stress does impact obesity. So we need to be able to manage our stress. So how do we do that exactly? Well, one tip is to keep a schedule. Many of us who had a very common routine previously have lost that routine. Things are kind of turned upside down. But trying to get back to normalcy as much as possible can really help with that stress. So get up at the same time every day. Get dressed. Brush your teeth, change your clothes, and go to work, just like you normally would. Now, it may be that work is your dining room table, but nonetheless, keeping a schedule can really help in terms of managing stress. Connect with others. Just because we're healthy distancing does not mean that we need to be socially isolated. Pick up the phone, call a friend, check in on them, have that accountability buddy. Um, do a class together. Make sure that you're checking in with friends and family. There's lots that you can do to connect with others and even to promote good causes, um, even while you're home. Meditate, pray, connect with your faith. For many people, their faith is really a source of stress relief and solace. But even while places of worship may be closed, remember that you can still practice your faith at home. Even if you're not into a particular religious affiliation, mindfulness has often been found to help with stress. Think about apps like Insight Timer. It's a free app that has a number of uh, mindfulness meditations on there that might help, even for as little as a minute. In particular, there's a kind that's called loving kindness meditations, where you really give yourself some self-compassion. That's something all of us need. And it's been found to really help with stress and improve our happiness. Next, try exercise. We know that exercise is a great way to relieve stress, and it's a great way to keep off some of the pants. So 
go for a walk, try yoga or another form of exercise. And take some time to exercise your brain too. Maybe you read or relax. Do the kinds of things that really take care of you. So I'm going to leave you with this very simple mnemonic. It's the SMILE score. Sleep enough, move your body, inhale and exhale, love and connect, and eat to nourish. Take care of yourself. Using these simple tips of how you can improve your diet, get a bit more exercise, and reduce your stress can help you to keep the pounds off during this pandemic. I hope all of you stay healthy and safe. Please do like and share this video if you found it helpful. And please leave me a comment below. If there are tips and tricks that you'd like to see, topics that you'd like to see addressed, each week I'll be putting out more videos that can help you to stay safe and healthy. Remember, please do subscribe. I'd love to be your virtual accountability buddy, and I want to be able to bring you content that you can use. Until next time, I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar, wishing you all a safe and healthy week. Thanks for joining me.